William, William S. Burroughs deserves a, a big mention uh, in the occult. Now, William S. Burroughs was born to a wealthy family in Kansas City, I believe. And uh, he's famous for uh, being one of the, the beat writers. Like William Butler Yeats and Isaac Newton, biographers tend to dismiss his interest in the occult as being like a fanciful sideline or, you know, an unfortunate episode in an otherwise genius life. When in reality, just like the previous two, Burroughs was absolutely as much an occultist as he was a writer or anything else. Now, you, mo most people know him from his early beep novels such as Junkie and Queer. And what is not known about him is what a magical innovator he was. In fact, he may have actually been the Chaos Magician before Chaos Magicians came along. If you look at his novel Naked Lunch, which he used the cut-up technique while living in a beat hotel in Paris, it predicted the rise of AIDS and also the crack epidemic. Now that's really interesting because uh, did, he, did it predict it or did he create it through his novel, through his magical intention? And very much so, um, Burroughs was a firm believer that there were no accidents in the universe. That if a, in, like in much of the world, magic was believed, and indigenous people believed magic was behind everything. So if someone was bitten by a snake and died, it wasn't an unfortunate accident, they were murdered. They were murdered by someone. So all the unfortunate things that happen in this world are a direct result of the will of other people being used to harm others. Now with that in mind, he was also a famous homosexual, but he was a member of a kind of a, a straight guy kind of homosexual scene it involved him and Allen Ginsberg and a few others who rejected the idea of uh, gays being like camp and flamboyant. He made a famous remark that you can call me a queer, but don't ever call me a fag or something along those lines. Now, continuing from that, when he was outside of America experimenting with drugs, including drugs that were actually invented by the Nazis, uh, hallucinogenic drugs, uh, in the late 50s when he wrote, when he wrote Naked Lunch, his remarkable novel, he became kind of obsessed in a negative way with Truman Capote. Now Truman Capote became the darling of American mainstream literature. There was a kind of a class system, there was three, there was three of them, Norman Mailer, Gore Vidal and Truman Capote and they were sort of the mainstream darlings of the new literary movement where the beat writers such as Ginsburg, Kerouac and Burroughs were pushed outside that. Burroughs resented this greatly and uh, from he kind of in letters to Ginsburg all through those years spoke about how Capote was just uh, Truman Capote was just a, a joke he was like mainstream because he wasn't that interesting and the usual kind of bohemian bitchiness you get in avant-garde scenes it recently it came to light about 10 years ago in when the letters uh, when when Burroughs' letters, which were held in an archive, came out, that he'd actually cursed Truman Capote. Truman Capote, his most successful book was In Cold Blood, which was kind of like a, a fictionalized non-fiction fiction account of a gruesome murder that took place in Kansas where a family of four were murdered by two people. While the trial was still going on, Capote went out there and wrote the book In Cold Blood, which became what was what Tom Wolfe named or termed a uh, porno violence. That it was used, it used graphic portrayals of violence in the same way that pornography uses graphic portrayals of sex in order to sell to titillate people. And In Cold Blood, which is quite a good book, Capote documents the murders, the father's throat, etc., being cut slowly. In you know, in quite gory detail, which was a new thing for those days, mid sixties now. Burroughs hated the book, and he even incited ideas that Capote had used the murders of these family members, these poor rural family members, to like, you know, try and win himself a, a Pulitzer Prize, which actually he didn't win. So there was a letter found in the Burroughs archive, and in that letter. 
It was called an open letter to Truman Capote, which was never mailed to my, it was just, it was a magical letter. And he basically trashed him and constantly cited a, a piece trashing Capote that was published in the English newspaper, The Observer. And at the end, he said, you will never write another word of significance following in cold blood. Something like that. Well, Capote, Capote, Tumor Capote's career went into decline after that, as did his, psych, his mental health, his personal life, and also he became addicted to barbiturates and alcohol. It was a slow decline, even though he did write, he was never able to reach the heights that he reached with In Cold Blood. And when he died at age 59, of these, this lifestyle, whatever, in the last year of his life, he was railing against Burroughs, writing almost hysterical things about how Burroughs is a, is, has no talent and all this kind of stuff. That was Capote who actually knew that William S. Burroughs had, had cursed him. Now, he didn't have to know it directly. This is common. When someone is cursed by another person, they become extremely hysterical and ra rail against them for no reason. And even if they don't believe in magic, it happens. It's something in their subconscious mind is telling them that they have been cursed. And in the case of Truman Capote, he was cursed by William Burroughs. William Burroughs was an interesting character and definitely deserves his place in the history of the occult. He, even using the technology things, like I heard my video about the electric, electro sigil, he was doing things like putting his intentions into tape recorders and leaving them around people's places with the, the play button on and also whispering mantras into them. His firm belief was, and an occultic belief, is there's absolutely no accidents in this universe. Everything that's happened happens because of the will of someone else and if tragedy befalls someone or happiness befalls someone, it's a direct result of someone actually putting their will towards that, another person, and it coming into manifestation. So there's something you didn't know, that um, William Burroughs murdered Truman Capote with a curse. And, uh, you know, such is the magical world. It's very, very strange, and there's lots more strange stories like that. But it just goes to show you uh, the the importance of magic. I suggest people read Naked Lunch if you haven't read anything and I also would suggest people read In Cold Blood if you're interested in that kind of thing because he did invent the genre that's been with us ever since and uh, so there you go the beat poets plus the the posh end at war with each other one side was using magic and they won. Okay thanks. <laughs>